All right, folks, it's time for another Starbase Summary. Big news in this video as multiple explosions were seen in the skies above Starbase. Not uncharacteristic for the area, but uh, that video is coming up <laughs> in a little bit. Work on the pad there, installing that uh, gantry for the quick disconnect, we think. There's some parts being assembled through the fog. Sometimes those lights make... Uh, Views pretty difficult at night, but you can see them sort of using that telehandler to apply some things there. There's a hot staging ring going in the background, leaving Mega Bay 1 just on the other side of that fence. If you sort of like blur your eyes a little bit, a 3D image will pop out. Wait, wait sorry. Different thing. Uh, if you blur your eyes a little bit, you can see the hot staging ring <laughs> moving out of Mega Bay 1. So methane pump motors, it looked like. This was over at Matthews as the cleanup and repairs continue. I Hopefully it's legitimate to say repairs now, but just uh, moving multiple huge pieces of equipment with the crane there. Looks like we, we've got a couple of these, apparently. Scroll back and <laughs> see if the, those two titles were the exact same. Hey, look at this! we got a camera on the front of the truck. That must be the truck's aerial there, driving along the beach for the 4th of July. Quite a few folks showing up over there. Had a little bit of a stage. Of course, there was a uh, fireworks celebration over there. I think put on by SpaceX and uh, approved, stamped, whatever the right terminology is, by the city of Starbase. I don't think it was funded by the city. But there you go. Look at this. It was a little low to the ground. I don't think that they had, like, a hazard area or anything for them. Of course, it was the 4th of July. And the cheeky comment about, which I don't even have to, come on. Do I really have to explain the cheeky comment about explosions in the air? So we were hanging out over there as well. Uh, we've got Jack and Jerry and Dee there on the beach. We did a little bit of a live stream covering the fireworks in the background. This shot was, or that previous shot, was from a comically tall tripod that Jerry, er, not Jerry, Dee had sent out there. Here's a ground level shot from one of Dee's cameras with the fireworks going off in the background. Now, personally, I wonder, did they have to do any special paperwork for, wow! That, usually, I was gonna talk about, did they have to do any special paperwork because of how close they were to methane storage and then one of those aerial shells went off basically at ground level. <laughs> it looked like in the video there. Now, there's a little bit of telephoto magic happening here because the, the fireworks were sort of between the launch mount and the camera. They were set up over on the uh, side. And also, I, I think some of these are not the official show. I think some of these are coming up from the beach, like folks lighting fireworks down the beach, but then the official show is over here. So that super low shot that came in, I don't know if that was maybe just one of these lower uh, consumer grade aerial shells versus the big, should I say, professional grade shells that were part of the official sort of display that was happening. If you want, you can go back again. We've got the multiple audio tracks. You can go back to the beginning of the fireworks and you can flip over to the ambient track if you want to hear all of these things uh, popping off. <laughs> Welcome to Starbase Summaries. Uh, we've got a little bit of an extended cut here, but it is cool to see this. A lot of times up the road at South Padre, you see quite a bit of fireworks. I think they do them during the summer just about every weekend because it's a big tourist attraction. But it's cool to see stuff here with the big public turnout on the beach. Also got those smoke trails. This is, this is one of our, yeah, this is one of our 24-7 cameras. You can tell because it cranks the exposure through the roof. And so it's exposing those clouds. You can see how they sort of like drift along. But these are these night vision security cameras that we use in a lot of places for uh, weatherproof 24-7, 365 deployments. You're not going to put a super fancy 4K blah, blah, blah camera out there. Uh, you put one of these cameras that can live on the beach for years at a time before they succumb to corrosion. So, yeah, see, there's a little dinky firework on the right-hand side. I think that was the... Like somebody on the side sending up some little sparkly bits. But this is the main shipping. What do y'all call... I mean, there's a grand finale, right? That's not just something that my mom told me when we went to watch fireworks. Like, there's a bunch of fireworks that go off all at once. Like this. 
the funny thing is, those things are like popping at the, the elevation of the top of the tower, basically. <laughs> the tower is what, 400 and change feet tall, and so those things are going up to like 500 feet and then popping off? Five, I mean, it's, I'm like measuring the tower with my finger to try and. I mean, that's probably five, six hundred feet that those things are going off at, right? Anyways, happy 4th of July to uh, those who celebrate. I got no end of memes in the back channel from all of our overseas folks. The British, let me tell you, like wondering what's going on that day. Backing into Starbase, here is Pad 1 again. Scaffolding still up around the top there. Had a lot of comments on the welding that we sort of focused in on last video. Um, a lot of people saying they thought it was hard surfacing or hard facing, I think it was, where you add a different type of material welded in layers on the top. I think those are GPS positioners, by the way. Those antenna things, I, I am almost positive, those really do look like GPS domes like you'd see on a grater, showing exactly where the end of those sticks are. So anyway, sorry, I, I had to mention those little domey things real quick. Um, a lot of people saying that it looked like hard facing, where you put a... a weld a different type of material onto a surface that's going to get a lot of wear, uh, like an excavator bucket, or a grater blade, or a, a tilling implement, or something like, like, a, like, a, like a plow or something, right? And instead of losing the steel underneath, you put a harder material on top. Now, I just, I don't understand what abrasion is going to be happening in that area, so can the hard facing also have something to do with heat? Like heat erosion? Or they just build it up and that material they use is more likely to uh, withstand the launches? I'm not sure. Anyways, elevators. There's some elevators there for the fans of me talking about what's actually being displayed on the screen. Uh, it's interesting how the elevators have steps going up to them. Like, you can't really roll a cart into those elevators, right? In any event, water tank farm. You can tell by the big pipes. Oh, and look at that. There's just ends on the pipes. There's like a valve or something there. Two flanges and a little bit, and then it just goes out to... Uh, I wonder if that's like an overpressure thing or something. It's like a burst valve or something there. That if the pressure exceeds something, they uh, that bursts out the end, and then they've got that little T in it to keep it from hitting the tanks next to it. I don't know. Some repairs. Or a tablecloth here on the uh, legs. This isn't the big cross-hatch complete welding service. They're just sort of welding these things in. But remember how important it is that these things are all sealed Right? You can't have any weaknesses. Oh, he's actually testing that, it looks like. That dude looks like a weld inspector. He's got, like, a little device. He's, like, measuring those welds or something like that. Neat. Uh, you, you don't really want to have cracks or gaps or cavities or anything like that where that hot rocket exhaust that's moving ridiculously fast uh, can get in and have a little blowout situation. Here we've got... This is the adapter. Isn't it? Yeah, that looks like they're working on the adapter there. And a bunch of work has been happening over here, removing things, adding some things, sort of adding some tabs. It really does look like this gets, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't even know that it's questioned at this point, gets attached to the top of the OLM, and then a ship sits on top of it. The thing we haven't really seen a lot of is how they plan to uh, put the propellants, the fuel, into the ship. Because the booster quick disconnect is not going to attach there, right? There's some leg braces. Legs are braces. I mean, whatever you want to call them. Little additional things that they've got staged there to uh, make sure that's nice and sturdy against the OLM top, I would think. But uh, you don't... Uh, oh, where was I going with that? Jeez. Oh, how are you going to get the propellants into the ship? We haven't seen that. We've seen some QD plates sort of floating around... And are they test fitting it? Are they measuring it? They're going to have to come up with some sort of adapter, not just to hold the ship or let the ship sit on the pad with ship-style clamps. They're also going to have to get the propellants into the ship. It's not just a, like a stacking test to see if they can put a ship there. They, they need to static fire it, right? So we are going to continue keeping an eye for exactly how that might work. Is it going to be a temporary thing? Is it going to be something mounted on the side of the ship and then... I don't think you could do, like, soft hoses. They're cryopropellants, right? You could just have, like, like, flexible hoses to do the thing. Maybe braided hoses that have steel, stainless steel or something on the outside of it. But, uh, I don't know. I guess I guess we will see. I put, those are camera mounts on the left-hand side. You see the orange cables, by the way, and the two big tubes looking up? I'm almost positive those are, like, makeshift camera mounts. Like, big glass things, inserts in the front, and then uh, pipes to protect the cameras. 
I did see a lot of conversation in the last video about uh, scaffold versus scaffolds or scaffolding. Apparently there is no terminology for just one piece of scaffold, like a subunit of scaffold that would not stand on its own. It doesn't go down to like scaff. It's just scaffold components that are not a complete scaffold, I guess. Scaffolds. Anyways, a lot of that happening here in this shot over on pad two. Um, I'm, I guess they're still working on it. I can't wait till this is sort of done and they paint all this so that it looks done. Right, right now it, it has that view of a, you know, you, you go to like a battleship museum or whatever and you see the places where they've patched it and they've painted it and they haven't redone the entire thing. They're just trying to preserve it and it's very much an unfinished state still, but, uh, oh, cladding install aborted. Well, we do have that thing spinning quite a bit. In fact, you can see the forces actually making it uh, lean out a little bit and it's spinning around sort of a center of mass. It's... It almost looks like it's going to start bending that crane side to side. And then they let it back down again because it had picked up too much rotation, it looked like. Interesting. A lot of times you see those taglines that keep it from getting that rotation, but the wind was just not in its favor today. Here's the short stubby chopsticks on the second pad. It still has the steel newtons there in the uh, the catch surfaces, the little the springy sort of padded, I guess you could say, catch surfaces. They did run out and grab some of these nose cones inside the Star Factory, shot here exposed for inside. That looks like Ship 42's nose cone. I'm going to pan over to Ship 41. I'm going to pan over some more. I like this. It's just all one shot. This is what it's like to be out in the field. To S40. They're just in line, like 40, 41, 42, right? That welding robot on the side there. Continuing at 39. Hey, it's 39. Very, like, pin hitty there. Any events? Ship 43, ship 44's nose cone, and this says ship 44 is the shorter one. Missing some segments underneath, I would guess. But again, these videos, I don't do the detailed analysis of, look, the, the forward bung replacement tube has been attached to the... Yeah, that's not what I do in these videos. I just say, check it out, explosions over Starbase. Uh, but that's going to wrap it up for now. Appreciate you all hanging out. Also, be on the lookout for some new commentary. I think we've got commentary in Dutch on this one. So look at the settings, see if you can switch to a different language. But appreciate you all watching, and we will see you nerds later.